Okay, I love album covers. It's one of the most exciting things about an album for me. The little tiny box that can have anything in it. And trust me, I mean anything. It's the thing I'm forced to look at while consuming the music. It better be good. There's the really good ones, really bad ones, and the ones that make me go, you sure you got it all up here? But man, oh man, are these things all over the place. And if my years on this planet being a music head have done anything to me, besides drive me insane, it's made me experience more artwork than the freaking Louvre. So in this video, I'm going in deep to show you the coolest, weirdest and downright craziest album covers I know of and some that you guys mentioned as well that I wish you never did because holy and if at any point you enjoy this video then consider subscribing it means a ton anyways let's get into this enjoy You know, I've seen a lot of album art in my days. I love the stuff, but I feel like the relationship may be one-sided because as much as I love the things, I don't think they love me back. Seeing album covers today is almost like a gamble. Only difference being I don't come out of it insanely poor at the end, uh, most of the time. They're one of the first impressions me and you might have on a project. It's kind of like a thumbnail for a video or a headline to an article, if you want to think of it that way. Artist covers can do all sorts of things and come in a variety of fashions. Some people use the cover to have multiple meanings all sandwich layer-like. They can be references to some other media like a comic book or magazine or a throwback piece paying homage to a certain time period. Sometimes it's used to bring awareness or give commentary to something that the artists want to give commentary to. They can be a series of artwork spanning multiple projects and having a central theme to them, but generally they're used to emphasize the music you're either about to or are listening to, giving you a glimpse into what you're about to embark on, like how this is music for aliens. And I mean, if your music sounds like this and your cover looks like this, you're doing something right, trust me. They come in many styles, some people going all all out, getting artists or designers to do their covers for them, or taking a more minimalist approach, getting covers that are simple yet effective. It's hard to say which I like more, cause it really depends on the music for me, but I think we can all agree, this ain't it. Or how about just going all black, eh? Screw the album cover. Oh yeah, now you're standing out. It's like these guys are saying, how about just close your eyes, eh? Think of your own cover. But tell me, what do you guys get when you take these black squares and invert the color? Well, if you said Donald Glover's fourth album, <laughs> you're not gonna pass this test, cause the answer is the Beatles. Well, well, actually, childish Donald Glover Gambino did have a change in cover for his 2013 album Because the Internet, an album about finding connection in an online centered world, the official cover being this GIF cover. Obviously, sites like Apple Music and Spotify don't support GIFs, so you'd only be able to see it if you actually had the file yourself. By the way, it's not GIF. If you say GIF, you're going on the list. Album art is one of the most important aspects to an album in my opinion. Like I kind of mentioned, it's the thing that most people see before listening to your music. Peeps see a cover and they get on their side and power flex. It can honestly sway my opinion of a project just by looking at a bad cover, but sometimes they're so bad, they make me wonder, did you guys even think about this before finalizing it? Oh yeah. That's the one. But okay, enough guff. Let's look at some more crazy album covers, eh? Ah, dude, I said crazy, not therapy inducing. Lady Gaga, I love her. I don't love this album cover though. The Born This Way cover. I remember when this came out, people were panning this thing all over it until the end of the year, to the point it got voted one of the worst album covers of the decade, and it just started. I know someone saw this and went, Hold on. I mean, this was the cover for the single. I don't get it. Why not use this? Why do you have to traumatize me? Well, she's not the first and definitely won't be the last because experimental hip hop group Death Grips has some really weird stuff. You know, it started off pretty tame. Just a guy in front of a bush, nothing crazy. But when I say this escalated, okay, I'm gonna uncensor it for one second, okay? Three, two, one. It's even crazier, as later that year for their next project, they said, how can we top this? And proceeded to just put a peen on the cover. Yup, this black bar is not just for aesthetic. The cover has the full thing under it. You rocking the weenus cover? I'm sure that's a conversation starter. 50 Cent had a mini theme going on with his covers, just him without a shirt on in different styles. And that third album, people were hype. Come on, shirtless 50, shirtless 50, shirtless fit. That third album was also a big deal at the time as he was competing with Kanye West in this friendly album competition back when their albums came out in 2007. 50 was up against this guy, bro? This dude still plays with stuffed animals. Ain't no way he's winning. I'll talk about him more another time, but yeah, Kanye kind of crushed him with that, him and his bear. Ah, the dropout bear, aka his fursona. What started out as a school mascot costume that just so happened to be there at the school turned into such an integral part of the man's branding, putting him on everything, even his covers. The second 
second version being an animatronic, and of course the third a drawing by artist Takashi Mirakami. But after 2008, with his fourth album 808s and Heartbreak, he's pretty much gone on to retire the fluffy guy. Eh, kinda. Sorry for the five people still waiting for that show. But that hasn't stopped his fans and collaborators from keeping the furball alive. Even the artist who did the Dark Fantasy cover, George Kondo, made a bunch of covers, eight in total. One of them having the bear. That's not a bear. That's an abomination. Of course, Jesus infamously has no cover, opting to just have the CD visible as sort of an open casket for the CD medium. And again with multiple covers, there's the virtual band Gorillaz and the cover for their studio album Plastic Beach, made via 3D CG and shown with this statuesque model of the island. There's a total of four different covers for this bad boy, each at a different time of day. There's the original sunset version, the day version for the vinyl release, the sunrise version exclusively to iTunes, and the final night version, available via the special edition version of the CD, which even came with a making of documentary. Oh yeah, I want to see how they make that. Package for, um, uh, user bites? Ugh, okay, what is it this time? What the? Charlie's Orchestra? This was supposed to be a one-off joke, I don't want this, take this back! Oh yeah, I forgot. He just walks off like a total donkey when he delivers. Man, this cover is almost as bad as that Virgil Abloh cover he did for Pop Smoke's album. Thank god that got changed. It's weird, he's done some really nice work for others. I guess he wasn't feeling the woo that day. I wonder what it'd look like if they blended all these artists' faces together like some deep fake thing. Or like Mac Miller's Circles cover. Speaking of faces what's with band members morphing their faces together on a cover like is this some secret code i don't know about like is this how you get into the elite band committee i don't think they got the memo oh yeah there's also the iconic stuff you know the albums you literally can't escape even if you tried you got stuff in hip-hop the original chronic ready to die nwa the low end theory illmatic some good stuff outside of rap pink floyd's the dark side of the moon has been chemically implanted into my brain at this point most people don't even know the band they just know the picture they see it and just go yep put that on my shirt. And in the same boat, Nirvana's Nevermind with the iconic baby going for the money. Imagine having your schlong out for a cover and it becomes iconic. The British boys, the Beatles got a couple under their belt. Sgt. Pepper's, Revolver, Beatles for sale. But by far, the big one being their penultimate album, Abbey Road, with the band walking across the street of... Hold on, let me make sure I get this right. I don't know, I couldn't tell you. This thing has been parodied so many times by fans, in pop culture, and by other artists, including member Paul McCartney himself for his 1993 album Paul is Live, and oh, holy smokes, no! Paul, I love you, I really do, but man, I can't defend this, I'll lose my license. Rock band Led Zeppelin decided to do the blown up airship for their debut self-titled album, the Hindenburg Airship, which went down in 1937. They've attached themselves so much to this blimp, you'd think they blew it up. I also asked you guys to give me some more covers, and man, Man, you did not disappoint. Tame and Paula's are super trippy. A lot of Tyler and Kanye was mentioned too. It is good stuff. The weekend stuff is fun to look at, <laughs> most of the time. You know, he used to work at the clothing company American Apparel back in like 2010. And let me show you something. American Apparel ads always cross over into this controversial side of things. And these were some of the advertisements from around then. And hey, would you look at that? I wonder where that would lead. Some rap songs from Earl is an eye catcher. Same with Awaken My Love from Bino. Still surprises me that nothing from that album got a video. MF Doom's got some nice stuff with Operation Doomsday, Mmm Food, and Mad Villainy. Radiohead's got two back to back with OK Computer and Kid A. Fleetwood Mac and Purple Rain are also standouts for sure. The rock band Tool always has something trippy up their sleeves, but so does Trippy Red. 1998's Music Has the Right to Children by Boards of Canada is literally nightmare fuel, but the scariest thing about them is that they're not even Canadian. Oh my god, no. <laughs> like, you can't make this stuff up. Well, somebody did. But folks, I'm sorry to say that no. Nothing here tops what is easily the best album cover of all time. It's fucking Weezer. Weezer. With Close Second being the dog from Ratitude, there's not a single person in the world who can top these covers. Uh, unless you're Viper. Album covers are something, eh? I'm telling you, just take a picture of your window and slap an advisory sticker on it. It'll be better than half the ones in this video. But anyways, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you haven't already. And uh, can I help you? Yeah, you're making fun of our album cover, huh? Are you Charlie Orchestra? Why do you even exist? You're just a one-off joke. <laughs>